Hello and welcome to another episode of the Try and Scotsman podcast. Um, I'm recording this on a different mic. Um, I'm using a lavalier or lavalier. I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, you know, like one of those wee mics that you attach to your top if you're uh, having an interview or something. Um, kind of like the ones you see on TV, sort of thing. So let's see how it goes. I kind of figured. It might make life a little bit easier because I don't have to sit at the computer. Um, I can just kind of record on the go. Obviously, it, it uses um, the headphone jack on my phone. So I've had to use my old S10 because um, my, my S20 doesn't um, have a headphone jack. Um, but yeah, so I've never really properly used it. I've just kind of tested it out. It does pick up some noise. I've got my fan blowing at me, so I don't know if I'm going to have any issues cleaning that up. Um, but I got it because I was thinking, like, I'm trying to get into mini painting. You might have seen on Twitter and that. Because um, I found when I when I started painting the, the Mansions of Madness minis, um, my brain switched off. Like I was able to just calm my my mind. Um, something I've been struggling to do for for a long time. Um, and uh, yeah, but then I ended up finding it stressful because I'm just terrible at it. So I've spent quite a lot of money on things. Um, that. I'm hoping it's not a hyper focus and I, I lose interest in. Um, but I've, I've kind of bought a few things to try to make my life easier. Um, kind of, I don't know, try different approaches and stuff. I've been watching so many YouTube videos. Um, I, I, like I'm on my last day of my week off work and, um, Part of the plan was that I was going to have done quite a lot of painting. Um, I've done barely any. Um, I, well, I've done quite a bit. Like, there was one that I couldn't sleep and I did quite a bit, but I've had to, um, stop because I'm, I'm just, I'm doing it wrong. I'm obviously not thinning my paints enough or I'm thinning them too much. Um, so I've been stripping the paint off or, um, there's ones that I'm waiting to see if I should strip the paint off or not. Um, I ordered, <laughs> I've ordered a load of minis off um, Encounters, um, uh, Random Encounters, um, which I think they're slightly bigger. Um, the only difference is I'm going to need to use sprue things on them, like cut the sprues, um, which I've never done before. So I might need some of that green stuff and whatnot. So th then again, th there's more money. Uh, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll see. But yeah, so th there's some some really cool ones, and it was to kind of like a, a couple of them are sl like they they don't seem too intricate, and it, it's just more to kind of teach myself how to layer and shade and and stuff like that. Maybe uh, try to learn uh, dry brushing. Because that's the one thing I find with painting minis. There's no, like, quick start guide. There's no ideal miniatures for people to start on. Or if there are, it's just, you know, all subjective kind of, um, you know, wh where other people started, really. Um you know, there's there's nothing that's branded as like this is the go to, this is how to get into it kind of thing. Because obviously you've got so many different um, war games and and uh, tabletop games that that feature minis, um, and you know, I'm I'm not into like the war game thing because you know they're very involved um and obviously it's a very social thing but it's the whole point of me doing this although like obviously mansion of madness is a board game and it'll be for game nights with my kids and stuff 
Um, that's a different kind of social, you know. But yeah, so we'll see how how that goes. Um, obviously, a lot of the the episodes recently have been um, sort of ADHD and and whatnot. And again, I, I for anyone who um, hasn't listened to previous ones, I I haven't been diagnosed. I'm self diagnosed at the moment. I call it ADHD because it's just easier to relate to, I think, because uh, most of my symptoms line up with ADHD more than anything else, um, for now anyway. Um, so yeah, it's, it's obviously it's, it's attaching a label that might be incorrect, but I, I just want to make it clear I, I'm not, uh, you know, I, I'm only going with what I know of my symptoms at the moment. It, it's not so much I'm going by the the label, um, and and that's the the weird thing as well. Like I've I've not been having really great st- uh, sleep these past couple weeks, but during my week off, um, I've my symptoms have been nowhere near as bad as they have been. So obviously, a lot of it is down to stress. Um, like I've been able to kind of chill. It had quite a few busy days, mind, because my my daughter turned, my eldest daughter turned fourteen yesterday. Um, we went for, uh, we took her and her sisters out for for food on Sunday. Um, so it was quite a bit of driving, um, and and kind of going places I wasn't familiar with and stuff, and. You know, it wasn't it wasn't that bad, and I I have quite bad anxiety, especially when it comes to places I'm not familiar with, especially when I'm driving. Uh, I get really stressed normally, but I was okay. But yeah, so it's been a busy few few days, but I've I've been the least stressed. Um. And it's been good. It, it's been quite nice knowing I can do it. But it's just obviously when I guess I'm factoring work and all this other stuff in, I'm just spread thin. Um, like the weekend, um, was, was quite a social thing. Um, like a lot more, uh, for me because we, we went over Heather's mum's. Um, we had food and, and did some, some wrapping and stuff, um, like presents. Um, we were there for, got about five hours, um, and, and her brother and his partner were there. So yeah, like I've gone from not really having done anything in a social capacity for about two weeks. To then um, doing two days of it, and I I got to admit my spoons were like I was running out of spoons, and and my worry is because I always get worried I get too comfortable, and then um, perhaps me being the real me is is too much for some people, um, especially when it comes to my language. Uh, but I think I was okay. I did. I don't think I embarrassed Heather or anything, so that's good, right? But yeah, it's um very busy. Um but while I remember, because th- this is part of what I was gonna was gonna be one of the main points on the podcast, and I've not even fucking said anything about it yet. Um after two years almost of living over um Swansea Way, I've finally registered at the GP. Um I've been told I've gotta leave it a week after handing the form in. Um before I call to make an appointment, so that that's tomorrow, um, and I need to try and get the ball rolling with um, my diagnosis and a, a couple other things I got to take care of. And yeah, so it, it it'll be interesting to see because um, I, I I've heard horror stories, you know, I've I've heard how. Um, tough. The 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 beginning of the journey is, but I mean, 
in in reality, can it be any tougher than what I'm going through, where I'm just I've been struggling, um, and nothing's been happening because I've been either too. I don't think scared's the right word, but to, I don't know, like, I, I've had major trepidations about doing it, um, but nothing can change if if I don't do anything, so it's like, I, I need to train myself that, you know, while my fight or flight response is to naturally uh, bury my head in the sand, it doesn't achieve anything. It it might it might make me feel better short term, but long term it, it's just gonna come back and and bite me in the ass, realistically. Um and then how how can I advocate like 'cause I do feel like a bit of a hypocrite, because I'd be the one to like my advice to others would be to obviously do it. But then, obviously, I'm not really leading by example. So, but then, isn't that the way? We're always good at giving the advice, and we 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 can give absolutely sound advice, but we don't actually take it ourselves. Uh, and of course, the other big thing, I guess, just in case anyone may have missed it, is uh, I've basically I'm done with streaming um, on Twitch. I haven't even been on there as a viewer, really. Um, I've been on for a couple drops for some some games, but not actually watching or active in chat. It's, I don't know. I just I, I find I find the whole thing incredibly draining. Um, <sighs> there's a lot of drama. There's a lot of two face uh, bullshit behavior. Um, it's like everything seems to have an ulterior motive. People can't just exist and coexist. Um, there's always got to be something someone's mad at. Um, and I, I just don't have room for that. Um, and just seeing all the falseness, like all the people sucking up other people's asses because they're doing well. Um, you know, it's uh, it's just too much. Um, like I deactivated my Twitter for a few days because um, just that was a cesspit of of negativity, bitterness. Um, obviously, the whole Elon thing, bringing all these suspended accounts back out, and and just the the horrible horrible stuff folk are doing and saying uh, and applauding you know there, there's no shame um, and and what what topped it off like the just before I deactivated my account there was an article for somewhere down here in Wales um, and it, it was about um, A guy who had abused a child sexually. Um, I didn't read the whole article. I I read the the comments and stuff, and I was just like, Do you know what? I, nah, that that's enough internet. That's enough Twitter. Um, and and I know people will be like, well, why why deactivate your account? You don't need to. And, and I'm like, yeah, but I, I'm Twitter's doing my head in, so. If if I if I uninstall the app, I've got to go through the hassle of reinstalling it, um, and and I I have a a different launcher and it's an absolute prick to rearrange my my apps and stuff. And I I just I don't need that, you know. Um, I'm trying to minimize the amount of uh, you know <sighs> superfluous things in my life that I could do without. It's about having a cleaner, a cleaner brain function, um, and uh, yeah, I could turn the notifications off. But the problem is, when I, when I, if I decided, like when I decide to go back on Twitter, I've, I've then got all these notifications where I've been tagged and comments and stuff that they'll think I've been ignoring, 
Uh, which, you know, technically I have, but you know how people are. They get f- quite finicky and think it's about them when, when really I'm. But then I, I don't feel like I need to fucking announce that I'm having a break. You know, it's not. Because I feel like, I don't know, that, that just draws attention. It, and it, 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 it's, um, it defeats the purpose then because then loads of people like pile on and they're like, oh yeah, you do you. Look after yourself. It's like, uh, uh, leave me alone. <laughs> That's why I'm doing it. So at least when it's deactivated, I can't be tagged in stuff. Like, I can't then come back onto Twitter and and be overwhelmed by the amount of notifications because no one can tag me in shit. So it's like I can't miss shit, you know? Um. So, yeah. Because everyone, everyone's so quick to just... I don't know, and I'm bad for it as well, and I think that's my um my re- rejection sensitivity, where um you know people aren't being off with me, but I build up in my head that they are that they're they're angry at me that I've somehow pissed them off, you know, um. So, yeah. Obviously, this is a bit of a just me blurting because I haven't recorded for a while and I I can't. Like, I'll be honest, I'm I'm playing multiverses while I'm doing this. And normally when I'm recording a podcast, I'm just sat there um, talking and I'm not doing anything else. So, yes, I am distracted, but I feel I need it because I've got to do my dailies. I've got to get my shit done. Um, I have. Um, so from the gaming side, obviously, I've started playing games that I had been holding off for streaming. Um, and it's so nice now not to have to think, oh, I'll keep that for streaming and, and kind of deny myself the, the joys of a game. And then I'd, I end up playing it like super late. Um, I've been playing Gotham Knights. I started playing that yesterday. Um, I've played about just under seven hours, and I've barely done anything story-wise. I've just been too busy doing, like, the stopping crimes and, um, like, I don't even know if they're classed as side quests, but, yeah, doing them. Um, I quite like the game. I can see how it could get quite repetitive, but I've I've done, I think, four nights, um... And I've I've played as all four characters now. Well, actually, no. I'm on my fourth night. I um I've started as Robin. Um, I'm a bit disappointed with the voice acting. Um, just just because there's there's nobody from my um like the the voice acting's good. Don't get me wrong. It's just obviously the iconic characters that um. I'm so used to because I I pretty much equate everything to um, the animated series. That is Batman. Like, that's my Batman. Um, And obviously, we had the passing of uh, Kevin Conroy, um, which, I mean, that that fucking hit hard because, and I've never met the guy. (laughs) Obviously, I never will now. But, like, what? a talent and and what a genuinely nice human being that we've lost um i think seeing tara strong posting pics when they they've been together at like comic cons and stuff like that um and just how close they were and, and how you know it it was just so heartwarming to to see because you don't really see that unless it's like because because voice actors are, are they're like a different breed um for the most part and and like because obviously you would only see like you know sort of actors that you you know like you see visually in their performances um in those situations normally if it's their partner. Rarely do you see that closeness, um, 
Like, there are the odd exceptions. Like, obviously, people that have worked long term, like the folk on sort of Marvel movies where they've been together for years as as part of the Avengers and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's just I loved seeing pictures like that where like um, th- there's one that springs to mind which I think was quite recent where Tara's sitting there um, I can't remember where they were. I, I don't know if it was like an airport or but it, it's like sort of, you know, like those um, bench seats uh, it's not like a bench bench, but like they, they've got individual seats, seats kind of like in the airport, um, which is why I'm thinking it's an airport. Um, and and he's um, lying down with his head on her lap, and they they just look so chill, um, and and just enjoying the moment. You know, they're not there hugging fans and having their photo taken while giving an autograph and stuff like that. They're they're just there, existing as as friends, really. And it was nice. Um But yeah, so obviously none of the voices I I recognise. Um you know, I'm again I'm not shitting on them. Um I th- I think it's quite a bold move and, and it not brave, but to to step into those roles uh when when you know significant performances have been done um by by specific individuals in the past it is quite a big deal um i'm just talking shit now cuz i'm trying to fight steven universe and harley quinn um <laughs> But like, you know, um, from what I've heard so far, I I do enjoy the performances. Um, I do like my favorites to play as so far are um, Batgirl and Nightwing. Uh, Red Hood's a bit clunky. Um, the I I don't have many gripes to be honest with you. Um, with the game. The the bike, the bat cycle, I feel pardon me, that could be made to, to have a bit more oomph. Like um it could do with a boost or like uh the ability to upgrade it as the game progresses. Um I do miss because I went in um knowing it was gonna be nothing like the Arkham games. Um but Trying to traverse the uh the the city um without being able to like, you know, glide and glide boost and stuff like that. That I do find um a bit of a, a pain. But obviously I, I think they call it knighthood where like you can unlock um the ability to like each one has a unique ability to traverse a city, um, so that's kind of what I've been doing. Cause like you gotta stop ten um, premeditated crimes as each character, and they've got like a little to do list for other things as well. Um, so that is something I've I've just kind of been grafting on as well. Um, the story seems, from what I know of the story so far, it seems pretty good. Um, it's it's not, it's not your usual thing, um, so far anyway. I know the Court of Owls come into it, um, and it, it's good to kind of have the emphasis away from the Joker because I think. The, the the problem, even though I love the Joker and I relate to his character so much more now I'm older, um, I I feel he gets overused, um, and I know he's the main, if you want to call it that, the main villain, um. But I, I do think a lot of other villains um, just live in his shadow. 
um, which is a shame because DC, I mean, both both Marvel and DC have a good stable of um, rogues, but um, I don't know. Obviously, DC typically is a bit more darker, um, and like for a long t- like Clayface, I. I I loved Clayface's character in Batman the Animated Series because his story was quite tragic. You know, he was he was a, an actor who got to, like you know suffered a really bad disfiguration. Um, and and you, you I don't know. I, I think his his backstory I think hits. Much harder than than any other villain, um, because obviously his his thing was through the fact that his livelihood was based upon his looks as a as an actor, which I think anybody, whether you're good looking or not, you can understand that because we, we live in such a um. A, a, a world where it's so shallow that everything is based on appearance almost. Um, it, it's like how you look is, is the sort of the, the currency, <laughs> um, the unofficial currency of the world. Um, and yeah, it's quite a heartbreaking, a heartbreaking story. Um, and it's it's almost like a it's almost like a, a Shakespearean tragedy, really. Um, so, because I think he features in Gotham Knights, I haven't encountered him yet. I think I saw him in like a trailer or something, um, or he he might have appeared in like the opening kind of footage. Um, and I, I like that it was, uh, Raz Al Ghul or Raish Al Ghul. Um, they pronounce it Raish in this, but most other things he's pronounced as Raz. Um, but I, I like how, like, I, I like his armor. Um, I love the fact that Tally is in it, because, again, for anyone who doesn't know, um, my, my second born, um, uh, she is called Talia. After, uh, Tali Al Ghul, which, you know, um, is pretty cool. And, um, it, it, it's quite cool because there's not really, you know, um, I actually say that, that there's not many other kit, because, like, one of the big issues for me in school was that there was umpteen Craigs. Um, there were like three in my class at one point in high school. Um, like one being me, obviously. Um, so it would get quite confusing when being addressed by the teacher, especially when we're, when one's being uh, like misbehaving, <laughs> and I'm just sat there not doing anything wrong. Um, so yeah, it's it's quite nice because. Like my eldest said, and um, that's a Welsh name, so it, it's quite, uh, it's relatively common. Um, the only, like, one of my friends I used to work with, um, her daughter's called Talia. I asked her if it was okay if I could name mine Talia, because obviously her, it was quite unique. I'd never known anyone else in real life called Talia. Um, and I didn't want to, like, steal it, you know? Um, but, um, Seren is, is a, a relatively, not, not overly common name, but I've, I've heard it a few times. Um, Talia, I've seen her name come up, obviously, in Batman, but, um, I think, uh, Skyrim, I think there's a character called, uh, Talia. Ah, oh, fuck. Just got beat by Shaggy and Jake. Um, I forgot what the fuck I was talking about now. Uh, Gotham Knights, yeah. So, um, yeah, it seems quite good. I'm, I am enjoying it. And it's nice to just kind of play it at my own pace without having to worry about streaming and, and all that shit. 
Um, I haven't, um, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that I've um, given up on content creation, like obviously podcasting, that's, that falls within that realm. Um, I am thinking of, like I said, I got this lavalier because I saw a YouTube video that recommended uh, having this type of mic for painting minis. Because I can't really do my mini painting where I would stream normally. Because uh, there's just not enough room. So I've been doing it in the kitchen. So I had recorded some videos, but I haven't published them or anything. Um where I was using my boom arm and my phone like I'm using right now um, to record. Um, but I've kind of, because the weather's not been good and, and I was spray painting the the primer onto my minis in the kitchen, but the kittens are there and um, I don't want to have them negatively affected by the spray um there, there was one morning it was nice and sunny and i thought right i'll go out and i'll get the primer done and by the time i got dressed and got downstairs it was fucking pissing it down um so obviously that didn't happen uh what else have i been playing so i, I did the speed runs on monkey island one and two the the um remastered editions um sadly they don't have platinum trophies they they're just um 100% so that kind of sucks um i've got return to monkey island i'm i think i've started part 2 of that i've just managed to sneak on to uh lechuk's ship um and I got the trophy for dying proper. That actually hit me in the feels. Um, I won't say what happened, but when I did it, um, I actually felt really sad because it gives you several chances. But if you just keep um, drowning, um, something really, I don't know, it's really sad. Um now, I don't know how this ends. I've avoided all streams. Um, I've avoided all uh, videos pertaining to it. Um, but I kind of feel like this is the final ever Monkey Island game. Um, and so I've been dragging out playing it. Because I I think I'll get quite emotional. <laughs> um because it it's the reason I fell in love with point and click adventures. Um because I played it, I think it was the Amiga. My my cousin gave me it and a shared load of games. And and I didn't know what the fuck it was. I'd never seen anything like it before. I can't even remember how old I would have been. Um, but yeah, I'd never seen anything like it before. Um, like I'd done text-based adventures and stuff like that. Like I, I remember uh, Zuta Lore um, because you could go into a brothel and talk to prostitutes. And I, I think I must have been like 9 or 10. <laughs> Something like that. Um, and and that that was just brilliant. Like, that that was one of my favourite games. Um, but obviously it was text-based. So having like a graphical adventure game like Monkey Island um... Yeah, it just kind of kind of blew me away. Um, and obviously the, ch the the rubber chicken with a pulley in the middle. Um, like, there's so many references I've probably learned and forgot. Um, but, like, there's a lot of fan service, I find, um, in return. A couple different voice actors, uh, for whatever reasons. 
some being that the actors are probably deceased now. Um, but yeah, just the humor is so on point. One of my favorite bits is when you're in the scum bar and you move from the f- the first half of the bar to the second and the, the music change. Um, it's like two different genres for the same song. Um, you know, there's so many, so many things, but I, I like what they've done because they, they've kind of, they've not made it too simple. Um, but they, they've taken what works, but also for a generation that maybe hasn't really experienced Monkey Island. Um, they've kind of, I don't know, they, they've just, they've done so many nice little changes. Um, things that I think for, for anyone who, if this is their first Monkey Island and they decide to go and check out um, the previous ones, I think that they'll struggle if they're expecting um, the same sort of um, gameplay or or features. Um, But that doesn't mean that that's not a negative really it depends on the the, the individual's patience um the one thing i did learn though well not learn but i didn't realize how late murray came into the series because obviously they remastered um the first two but the at least on PlayStation anyway, they haven't remastered um, any of the others. Uh, Because I think Murray comes in in Curse and then we see him again in uh, Escape. And and I don't know how, because I I think... (sighs) I don't really remember playing Curse, but I must have, because I remember first ever meeting Murray. Um, and I, I always thought Meat Hook <laughs> was in the, in the games more as well. I didn't realize, um, that that wasn't the case, but, but that's the weird thing about childhood memories. You know, like obviously when you have sweets and stuff. And granted, some things obviously do shrink. Like I, I read somewhere, um, that someone had an old school tin of Quality Street, and that old school tin from like the seventies or eighties can fit four current Quality Street tubs. Um, how how shite is that? Like we're paying more for like so much less than what we used to get. Fucking mental. Anyway, I'm just on a, a fucking complete ramble now. Um, but yeah, other than that, there's not really much else to to say, so I'm going to have to phone the doctor tomorrow. It's one of those situations, for those in, U- in the UK, I think it's the same across the board nowadays. I thought it was just localised, but um, the where you have to ring when they open, and then you just get the ball ache of the lines being busy, hanging up on you, and then you have to make at least 40 to 50 attempts, if not more, to actually get through to reception. Um, my my one concern is that, it, like, in a, in a way, I'm glad it's going to be a phone appointment. Um, but my my concern is that I think some of the things need to be judged visually, which seems backwards because I hate being looked at and I hate people judging me. Um, but like I th- I think obviously some of the the elements of my symptoms are conveyed more through 
the physicality, you know, like the body language and, and stuff like that. Um, I, th I think obviously that way you, you get like a truer picture as, as to how, how it affects me. Um, so obviously we'll have to see. It'll probably be a phone appointment and then maybe they'll want to have like a face to face. I don't know. Um, obviously a lot of people's accounts, um, have been like pre COVID that I've, I've heard their stories. So I, I don't know in, in the current way the world is, um, how, this maybe changes the dynamic of of getting the diagnosis. Will it be harder or easier or ju just same difficulty? <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll see. I'll um, I'll try and do an update on that. Um, but yeah, I am um, looking to get some miniature videos done. I think when I get the the ones that I've asked, I uh, ordered from, um, random encounters. I'll, um, I'll record everything, mistakes and all. So I kind of want it to, to mark the journey as well. So like I could look back on it and, you know, if I do improve, um, that I, I can see how much. So I think sometimes when it comes to self improvement and, whatever else, because we were there for every day of it, we don't always recognize um, moments when we maybe should be proud of ourselves, um, moments where th there is a, a definite sign of change. I think the only time really is um over a prolonged period where you where you're made to look back for whatever reason and kind of take stock of a situation obviously if it's a weight loss journey usually you've got you know pictures from the beginning of the journey you've got your weight which you check on a regular basis and stuff like that but you've also got your physical um feeling you know like if you feel healthier if you feel fitter um but other things, it, it's sometimes harder to, to have. And, and obviously one of my, my bigger problems is, um, a, a term I've mentioned before that I, I learned the, the metacognition, uh, metacognition where, you know, you struggle to think about thinking, um, and, and how much of that is me, how much of that is like anxiety, inner monologue, being a bitch. Um, I saw a, f a statistic the other day, actually, while I remember, uh, just while I'm on the subject, which I didn't think it was that high, but apparently close to 50% of people don't have an inner monologue. Now, I, I always thought it was lower, much lower double figures, like sort of 13% I read. Um, so I don't know if this is true or if this was just 50% in a, in a particular study. Um, but if, if that is in any way reflective of an overall sort of figure for the world, that's really fucking shocking to me because I want to know if that's a good thing. Like, do, do these people have less mental health issues? Do these people have, um, better lifestyles? Like, you know, what, what is different for them? Because I, I, A, I can't imagine life without an inner monologue, but B, it must be so quiet, but is that quiet and fury and like, are those people wishing they did have it? Or is it because they don't really know what it, it's like? So they, they're wishing for something, you know, like that whole be careful what you wish for sort of scenario where it, it's not, uh, as wonderful as, as you'd like to think. But yeah, that just, 
it baffles me that there there's people out there, regardless of how many or few um that that don't have that um and I think that's part because there's been a few things actually again I'm going off on a tangent, but fuck it um a couple things recently that have been um kind of my attention's been drawn to and and it turns out that it's all linked to my symptoms um the one because Heather and I were listening to the a d h d adults u k podcast um because kind of figured it might help her try to understand me and and that uh, and obviously like it's helping me understand me um but i thought it might be um good for us to listen to it as a couple um and i listen to my podcast and audiobooks at usually 1.2 1.3 times speed um and sh- and she was like, God, they're talking so fast. I'm like, yeah, because I-, I got it sped up. And I put it down to normal. And that was much better for her. But for me, it's quite painful. Um, not so much the Adult UK one, but because I changed it on Pocket Cast, it's, it's changed the speed for all of them. Um, and I-, I find it quite painful because... Uh, and mine are probably quite painful, just because I'm talking. But... Um, Obviously, sometimes I talk quite slow. It, it's like laboured, trying to get the words out sort of thing, which is weird because that's the thing that I struggle with. And, and when people can't get to the point, it, it feels like I'm getting a headache and, and I want to strangle them because it literally feels like it's killing me that they're taking so long to tell whatever it is they're telling. Um, yet I'm guilty of doing the same thing. But I think it's because in my head the words are like the thoughts are happening super fast and I just can't get the words out in, in that same fashion. Um, but yeah, so th- there was something else and it's completely gone out of my, my head now. Um, oh, so yeah, um, when we were over um, Heather's mum's... Um, uh, and obviously everyone was talking, and and Heather, um, so there was a subject they were on about, and and Heather um, did did a meme um, where, um, you like obviously anyone that does have these symptoms uh, should understand this perfectly, but where you get so excited that you you have some form of input for that conversation, but you can't wait because you're gonna forget. Um, and and that was another thing, and and I said now you know how it feels because the, there's a lot of times where I think to some people I might, and this is another reason why I try to avoid socialising because I don't have to try to justify these things, I don't have to worry about what people think about these things, um, and that's a point I've been trying to get across to Heather, like why I avoid certain things because I can't feel all these negative things if I don't open myself up to these vulnerabilities so like where I struggle socially if I don't get involved in social situations I can't struggle socially um but yeah so obviously the whole um I need to say it now I can't wait because I'm gonna forget um and I think for me that's exacerbated by the fact that you're talking painfully slow so I need to fucking say this now um, but then finishing people's sentences, that's something I've always done, not in a rude way, or I don't mean it rude. Um, I initially thought it was just to kind of demonstrate that I know what, like I can relate to what the people are saying and that I get them. Um, but I think there's a, a deeper thing behind that where it, it, it's also, if, if I finish your sentence, you will need to talk less. And therefore, it hurts me less to have to listen to you, um, which <laughs> that sounds quite rude. If obviously I were to tell someone that, um, but that's the thing I'm struggling with. How how can I open up to people without them taking offence? Because having to listen to them talk to me hurts. 
Like, there's, I don't think there is a nice way to say that, but it's only if you can understand that I'm not saying that to be hurtful, I'm not saying that to be a cunt, I'm saying that because that's how these symptoms affect me. Um, but it might not be all the time. It, it's like, um, I think I've mentioned it on, on here before, where, like, if I'm driving or whatever, or trying to concentrate, I can listen to music like my favorites playlist whatever and absolutely fine but then some days i can listen to that same music same songs and i feel like i have to punch a hole in the wall i can't my blood feels like it's gonna boil or it is boiling um because i don't know if it's like the frequency or um something about the the decibel level um, but the, there's someone that just makes me feel very violent when, when I hear, and these are things I really enjoy most times. Um, so, you know, it's not like it's a personal attack or anything on you because tomorrow I might enjoy listening to you and it's absolutely fine. But for now, it's like, Jesus, I, I feel like I'm being physically attacked in my brain. Um, but yeah, that that is something I am struggling with in terms of a lot of my symptoms is where people take how my symptoms affect me personally. And, and I think I can understand why, because obviously in, in the context of, of what I'm saying, they're kind of making life hard and, and worse for me at, at those times. But that's not reflective of my feelings towards those people. It's like, I don't, I don't dislike you. I, I'm not, you know, I don't hate you. Um, I know these are very much me problems, but I got to tell you that when my symptoms are affecting me so bad, I'm not, I'm not being mean. I'm not, this isn't a personal attack on you, but this is where I'm coming from. This is this is what's happening in these moments, and I need you to be aware of it. I hope that makes sense. It probably doesn't, but then a lot of what I say doesn't, so there we go. Um, but yeah, hopefully the audio quality turns out all right. This has turned out really long. I'm, maybe I can cut it because there were a few silences and, and periods where I was concentrating on multiverses, so I might be able to to trim this down a little bit. I just hope that the mic quality is good enough that I don't have to do too much uh, sound editing and fannying about because I'm recording this on my phone so I'm going to have to then edit it on my phone, I think. So I can't be arsed to transfer it over to the PC and, and then do it in Audacity, but I might have to. But if I can do all of this on my phone and it's literally then Wait, literally? I don't know if... I think I fucked up the word there. Um, but yeah, literally, if I if I can get everything done on my phone, it should just be a simple case of um, putting it on my OneDrive and then uh, uploading it to Acast from, from there. Um, I know I keep promising it, but I because I don't have to worry about streaming and that, and because, you know... Obviously, when, when stuff's happening in life, you've got stuff to talk about. When there's not really a lot happening in life, it, you, there's nothing really to, to discuss, is there? So, um, yeah, ho I'm, I'm hoping I can try and get some stuff out on the reg. Um, even, even if it's just for me, you know, like, you might not be interested in it, but, it's like a video, um, uh, an audio journal, maybe a video as well. Like I've I've recorded this in video form, but I I don't think I'll upload the video. It's just so I can strip the audio. Out. Um, because if I did it as an audio file, it would have done it as like an M4A, I think it is, and then I'd have to convert it. So it just seemed easier stripping the the um. The audio from the video instead, six and two threes, I guess, maybe in hindsight. But anyway, 
I am going to leave it there. I can't remember. I didn't say what episode number this is because I can't really remember what one I'm on. I think this might be 12. I think I, I if I remember rightly, I said 12 in the last one and it was actually 11. Um, so I think this is 12. But anyway, I will catch you on the flip or maybe the flop side if that's a thing. Um, and probably have some tales to tell from from my appointment from uh, tomorrow if I can get one. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, have a good one, and I will catch you when I catch you. Um, if you don't already, you can follow me on Twitter at Trying Scotsman. You can just search. Uh, well, actually, I've changed it to the Weedy Scotsman. Um, but I think if you search the Trying Scotsman, you you can still find me as well. Um, but yeah, at Trying Scotsman, um, I'm not hard to find. You can just Google it, and you should you should get everything you need. Um, but the the links will be in the show notes as well. In all my links, you'll you'll be able to go on to everything. Um, but yeah, I will catch you next time. And uh, yeah, just uh, take care of yourselves.